welcome to The Happy Writer, a show about creating and sustaining a long-term author career. My name is Patty Jansen, writer of science fiction and fantasy. I've published independently since 2011. This show covers motivation, diversification, learning new skills and your place in your career. Come on in and be happy. This is already episode 52 of The Happy Writer, which means that this thing has been going for a year. That's hard to believe, but also kind of awesome. I started this podcast adventure because no one reads blogs anymore. I thought, if only two people read my blog posts, I'm winning if three people listen to my audio blogs. I enjoy making these episodes. I feel it's important to pay it forward as writer, because there are so many sharks out there who are in it just to get money from desperate writers. But I also wanted to cut through some of the hype that's out there, because there is a lot. The idea that everything is rosy and you will surely be able to quit your day job, and that if you can't, there is something wrong with you, is wrong. Reality on the ground is that most people are not runaway successes, but that success can take many different shapes. I wanted to talk about people in the squishy middle, because we do not have very much in common with the bestsellers. Anyway, in this episode of The Happy Writer, I'm going to talk a bit about how to sell audiobooks. For ebooks, it seems fairly simple. You publish the book, and then you schedule a promotion, and then you book a number of list sites for a small amount, or you run pay per click ads pointing to the book. But ironically, for audiobooks, where you have spent a lot of money producing them, the landscape is far less clear. In the first place, it's not easy to change the price. Audible controls the pricing of audiobooks and doesn't allow you to change it. They don't even tell you what the price is going to be. They will give you some promotion codes, but only if you're exclusive to them. It used to be that these codes were very popular, because you used to get paid when someone used the code, so every writer would make sure to give out all the codes. And there would even be people who would scam the system based on giving out codes for fake audio. But since Audible has stopped paying for the audio codes, I haven't heard about many people who still use them. You can change the price of your audiobooks if they're produced via Findaway Voices, but not all platforms allow it or are prompt with the changes. Advertising to audio is difficult. There are a few players in the landscape that will allow you to run promotions to audiobooks, but because you can't change the price on the main retailer, Audible, there is really not that much point in doing it. You can run pay-per-click ads to audiobook listeners, because if they have an Audible subscription, they get a free credit every month and your book is free to them. But the Audible subscription model favours long books, and for a book to be a deal, you have to advertise a box set of audiobooks, that's not going to be much good to you if you have just one book. But if you do have a number of books in the same series, it is always a good idea to produce a box set. Audible allows you to have one box set per series. Since you get paid by length, even a credit borrow of your book will earn you a decent amount of money. You can run Facebook ads to it and target Audible subscribers and point them to your 30-hour box set. That can do quite well if you manage to get your Facebook ad working well. That's not really a promotion, but more of a slow burn. I have to be honest and say that being wide with your audio is probably the way to go, because it vastly increases your promotional opportunities. Fortunately, Audible lets you out of exclusivity after a period of 90 days, providing that you paid for the audio up front. In the early episodes of this podcast, I have already said that I think doing royalty share is a bad idea, and this is one of the reasons. If you're not exclusive to Audible, your royalty rate drops from 40% to 25%, and you lose the ability to give out codes. So if you want to use the codes, you can sign up for exclusive for a short period, 
and then you have to email Audible to be let out of the exclusivity contract and upload your book to Find Away Voices. Also note that a drop in royalty from 40% to 25% may sound like a lot, but it isn't, because this applies to the a la carte sales, and the vast majority of Audible listens are through their subscription model. They never pay 40% or 25% when averaged over your entire catalogue. A subscription listen is usually worth less than a dollar. Don't sweat this. There are much better opportunities to make more money out there. Once you're at Findaway Voices, you can select from a long list of audio distributors, some of which sell the audio for a fixed price, but many of them lend out to libraries. I suggest that you take all of them. While it is true that the library borrows won't break the bank, they do broaden your audience. And since it doesn't cost the library subscribers anything to listen to your books, there is not much of a barrier of entry. I do suggest that you leave Audible Books with ACX and that you go direct to Kobo and any other retailers that will offer this option in the future. The big thing is when you distribute audio through Findaway, you can submit to Chirp. Chirp is BookBub's audio platform. It is quite different from BookBub in that it also has a store where people can buy audio. At the moment, it only caters to listeners in the US and Canada, which is annoying, but you can apply for promotions and you pay 10% of the promotion revenue after the promotion has happened, as per the Kobo promotion model. It is best to reduce your audiobook to 99 cents. You can do this on the Findaway platform. The price won't be populated to all platforms because some don't allow to change the price, but it will be populated to Chirp and Apple, and a cheap promotion can sell a lot of books. If you have other books in the series, you will see continued higher sales. Even the ability to reduce your price is somewhat unreliable and stunted. You can set your own price at Findaway. At Audible, they set the price based on wanting to push people towards their subscription model, full books, of eight or nine hours at twenty four ninety nine. I set my prices on Findaway at nine ninety nine. These prices are available at Apple, where you get forty percent of the cover price, Google Play, Kobo, although I think it makes sense to upload them directly to them, and a whole host of other venues, some of which you won't ever have heard of. There is a bit of discussion going on in the author community about reading apps and other subscription platforms like Scribd, Dream and Bookmate. But those are my main platforms and account for at least three figures worth of sales per month. The main market for Scribd is international people who can't or don't want to buy on Amazon. The market for Dream is in Singapore. And the main market in Bookmate appears to be in the Nordic countries – It's a Russian platform, but don't let yourself be distracted by that. Ha, and I wrote this before the war, but they're still working and have probably extricated themselves from Russia. They've got an interesting format, and they do sell books. There are also platforms like Storytel, who these days distributes to secondary platforms where you can't get yourself. Although these individual distributors may be fairly small, and you may never have heard of them, Some of them are quite big in other countries. It may take a while for your book to filter through and start being recommended, but once that happens, it's pretty much guaranteed money every month. This is without your involvement. That is the crux of the point I want to make here. Most of the audiobook marketing is going to be passive. You just have to make sure that you're there and that your book looks attractive. I would also say that the recommendation engine and category options of Audible and ACX are terrible. Not only do they not offer many options and not allow you to control the price, it's pretty likely that some of your books will be put in wrong categories and it's not easy to get them changed. They seem to rely fully on offering the audiobook as a format together with your ebook and print book. So the way to market audiobooks on Amazon is to run promotions on the ebook. 
Ideally, you should make use of the launch juice when you first bring out a book and bring out all versions together. Pre-orders are a good way of doing this. You have to claim the book on Audible in order to be able to make the audio version. If you work with your narrator in the background and you have your own files to upload, this is a fairly quick process. I would recommend that once you have found a narrator you like, you deal with this person off Audible. For people who don't or can't have an Audible account, Find Away Voices does the same thing where they allow auditions and be the mediator between you and the narrator. I still suggest that once you've found and trust a narrator you like, that you deal with them off any of those platforms. With my narrators, I just ask them to put files in a Dropbox folder that I then upload myself after having paid and approved the audiobook. It requires a trustful relationship with the narrator, but it is much easier to control the audiobook when you do this. But even if you haven't done this, providing that you have not done royalty share, you can simply download the files from the ACX backend website and upload them to find a way. Once you have uploaded to ACX, it will take them two to three weeks to approve the file. Meanwhile, upload to find a way, which will approve your files overnight. This way, the find a way file will beat the ACX file to Apple. Findaway also has a form to ask Apple to remove the ACX copy, for which you get paid less, so that makes sense to do it. Once your book is at Apple through Findaway, you can run price promotions there, because Apple is one of the platforms where they support this. I also recommend that you upload directly to Kobo, because you can also control the price. They also run promotions where you can submit your books through an awkward online form, from which they then select manually and you are responsible for changing the price. And of course you can do whatever you want on your own website, and this is the main venue where I personally run audio promotions. You can do anything you want on your own website. If you have a number of audiobooks, you can bundle the first couple in a set, and sell them at a discount or give a discount code and advertise them to your list. Not only will this get you some nice sales, but you will also get people used to buying from you directly, which means that when the time comes that they have listened to the bundle and need the next volume, they are more likely to buy it there also. There are a number of email providers who will send out your audio But apart from Chirp, I haven't heard of any who are considered to be worth the time or money. It is a true irony that we have to spend a lot of money to produce an audiobook, and then when we have it produced, there are very few options to market the book in the traditional sense of the word. I would say that the primary way to market your book is through promotions on the ebook. If you get a free book bub on a book, Audio borrows will add a nice bump to your sales. You also market your audiobook by listing it everywhere, possibly also through putting up your first in series on YouTube, but that will only work if you have a lot of books and you can afford to treat the first book as a loss leader. Unless the capability to change your price changes dramatically across venues, I can't see this changing in the near future. What is likely to change in the future? Well, Spotify bought Findaway and they're likely to get into audio distribution. We don't know yet what shape that's going to take. Audio lending through libraries is expanding. Both will be subscription-based streaming, which will deliver us micro-payments. Not that interesting, unless you have a lot of books. Well, this was my somewhat unsatisfactory roundup on how to promote audiobooks. I really hope that we get better opportunities in the future. In the next episode, I'll be talking about submitting your book for promotions and how to get accepted by them. Thank you for listening to The Happy Writer Show. Check out links and information about other episodes on my website at pattyjansen.com where you can also find out about my books. You can support me by subscribing to the show or on Patreon at patreon.com slash Jansen.